Yo, what's going on guys? It's C-Rev. Welcome back to another MLB The Show 23 video. Team Affinity is back this year, which means we have a ton of offline grindable content to do, and we have the opportunity to grind for 30 different 97 overall cards. In this video, I'm going to be walking through all 30 cards and giving my opinions and advice on who you should prioritize as you go through these grinds. Team Affinity this year is a really long grind. It's going to take you a lot of time before you even get to your first or second 97 overall players from these divisions so it's especially important to know ahead of time who you want to take first or second in each division and that's what I'm hoping to help you with in this video a couple things I want to note before we dive into the card ratings I'm gonna be giving them a generalized rating in a tier list format so that's S A B C and D the cards are gonna be rated relative to each other not to other cards in the game additionally what I'm looking for when I'm rating these cards is a couple of things first off all of the best pitching in the game right now is right-handed, so hitting stats against right-handed pitching is going to hold way more weight than hitting stats versus left-handed pitching. That's just kind of how things are shaping up with team builds. And of course, we're going to be looking at the importance of the quirks that a card has, as well as whether I value offense or defense more at the position that they play. And there's also a lot of overlap with positions with these cards. There's a ton of outfielders that are really DHs, and there's six different shortstops. So I'm going to try to break down the cards as much as I can but at the end of the day you can only really start one shortstop right so it's gonna be up to you guys to make the decision there so that was a lot of talking let's dive into the cards themselves starting with the AL East and Cedric Mullins Cedric Mullins is a team affinity legend throughout the years and right away the AL East is throwing us some heat this is an S tier card in my opinion 106 89 versus righties which is what matters the most right now diamond fielding stock in center field with 84 speed this is pretty close to a five tool player whose biggest weakness weakness is hitting left on left and you're not going to be doing that a whole lot and as we know throughout the years Cedric has an amazing swing so to me this is an S tier card from one S tier card to another maybe I should have started with a different division we've got Raphael Devers at third base for me this is the first or second best card out of all 30 in team affinity again prioritizing the hitting versus righties a left-handed bat at third base and he's already almost maxed out versus righties he also has tons of quirks including breaking ball hitter and Raphael Devers cards just always rake so another S tier card here this is legitimately a top five third baseman in the game cooling it off a bit here with John Carlos Stanton tons of pop as you would expect 19 speed is completely unusable in the outfield especially with the outfield defense changes this year so this card is just essentially a DH by default almost maxed out power both sides but not a ton of quirks and I just think you're gonna want to use your DH spot for someone else in general because there's so many good options but if you are a Stanton fan Go for it. I should mention as well, he's six foot six. Some people have a hard time hitting with tall strike zones like that. I'm going to rate this card as B tier. He's an A tier hitter, but he's unusable in the outfield, so that drops him down a notch. Next is Wander Franco, who I'm also rating in B tier. This is a card and player that I have loved throughout the years, but unfortunately, this card is just pretty average at everything that matters. Only 101 70 versus righties, only gold fielding, only 78 speed. It's just really average across the board, so that's why he lands in B tier. Obviously, the switch hitting is great. I just don't think you're going to be able to use it a whole lot and you won't take advantage of that 125-89 versus lefties very often. Rounding out the ALEs, we have Bo Bichette, who I'm going to rate in A tier. Really, really good hitting attributes for a shortstop, but is going to play pretty average defense. Also has no quirks to speak of and no secondary positions. So if you're going with Bo Bichette as your shortstop, he is going to be your shortstop. The hitting stats on this card are amazing, but the fielding holds him back just a little bit from being an S tier. On to the AL Central now with Eloy Jimenez who I'm going to rate in A tier. This is another DH style outfielder. I really wouldn't recommend playing guys like this in the outfield, you know, bronze defense, 52 speed, if you can help it this year. The outfield defense changes have been massive. I've been seeing people getting horrible jumps in the outfield with poor defenders. So to me, this card is just another DH, and so it depends on how you want to use your DH spot. I will say as a hitter, this is one of the best DH hitters you could have, I think, especially with the 120 clutch. It's going to pull up your contact versus left if you have runners in scoring position and everything else hitting wise is just stacked across the board. So kind of the same thing with Stanton. Actually, I'd rate him A tier as a DH, maybe even S tier as a DH but only B tier as an outfielder. Next is Tristan McKenzie. Not gonna spend a whole lot of time on this card. Sorry, Tristan, if you're watching. This is the worst card in the set for sure. Uh, completely unusable. Two fastball slider curve, doesn't throw a changeup. 
Uh, you're not going to get anybody out with this card. It is a D tier card. On to Javi Baez, another shortstop, which surprisingly this version of Javi Baez is more defense focused. If you're going to run this guy at shortstop, I highly recommend grinding him to parallel two so you can bring his shield up to diamond from gold when you hit that 90 fielding. Again, another card that hits lefties amazingly, but isn't so great against righties. I would say this card is at the top of B tier and the bottom of A tier if I had to rate it just because of the hitting stats versus right-handed pitching. Great defensively though, and has a great swing and a lot of defensive secondaries. Next is Bobby Witt Jr., who is a card I've had a really hard time rating because of the disparity between his fielding and his speed. I can't tell if bronze fielding but 99 speed is going to be good or bad at shortstop. I don't know if I've ever seen a card that looked like this, at least from a shortstop defensive perspective. You probably won't want to play him at third either because that position is just so stacked. 186 versus righties is pretty good though, especially with the 99 speed. You're going to be stretching a lot of extra base hits. I'm going to rate this guy as high B tier, low A tier again, and you want to look at this probably as more of like an offensive shortstop if this is the guy you want to roll with. And finally in the AL Central, we have Joe Ryan, better than Tristan McKenzie because he does have a change up, but that's about it. This is a C tier card. Another guy with a generic pitch motion and generic pitch repertoire. Again, going to have a hard time getting good players out with a card like this. Rounding out the American League now, on to the AL West and Jeremy Pena. This is an A tier shortstop bordering on S tier. This is a really, really good card. The hitting versus righties leaves a bit to be desired, but 99 fielding and 99 speed. This card is going to be a vacuum at the shortstop position. This is a very strong defensive shortstop that has good enough hitting stats to go along with it. This is a really, really good card, A tier for sure. Next is Taylor Ward, who may be my first really big hot take of the video. To me, this Taylor Ward is an S tier right fielder. Let me explain why. Again, we're prioritizing hitting stats versus righties a lot. This card does that extremely well. 97, 94, it's his better side to hit against. And defensively, as a right fielder, this card is insane. He's got gold fielding, but max arm, max reaction, and 92 speed. If you really want to grind this guy up and get him to parallel four. He's going to have diamond defense, max arm, max reaction, 96 speed in right field, and he's going to have over 100 contact versus right. Also, his clutch is 108, so with runners in scoring position, he's going to be pulling up that contact even further. For me, this is an S-tier right fielder and one of the better cards in the Team Affinity set. I am sad they took away his catcher secondary, though. Another great card from the AL West here in A. Eugenio Suarez. I'm rating this card A-tier, but he's pretty close to S. What I really love about this card is the 105 clutch which is much higher than his 83 contact first right so if you end up having this guy come up with runners in scoring position you're going to be making up for the card's biggest weakness he does have shortstop secondary but i would touch him there with 37 speed this is just a really solid right-handed bat at the corner infield not as good as devers but still an a tier card next is Annalise garcia from the rangers i'm rating this card in a as well He's pretty close to what Cedric Mullins looked like. The reason I have Mullins S tier and this card A tier is one, this card is right-handed so you don't get the lefty-righty advantages. And then also Mullins is about 10 speed faster, but otherwise pretty similar cards. This is a really solid center field option. And finishing off the AL West, we have Paul Blackburn. One thing about this card is he's going to dot everything that he throws. 117 walks per nine. With the caliber of hitters that are in the game right now, though, 85 hits per nine is just not good enough. This card is going to be giving your opponents a large PCI. Because of the hits per nine being so low, I'm going to rate this card in C tier. Finally, on to the National League now and the NL East, we've got Ronald Acuna Jr. I feel like I'm rating a lot of cards in A tier, but this is another A tier card. Good versus righties, bats right-handed, kind of similar to Adelise, but with worse defense. This is another card you're going to want to get to parallel two if you want to use him a lot just to bump him up to that gold shield in right field. The reason he isn't S tier is because of 56 reaction. That is really, really low. I'm actually not sure how that's going to impact this card with the changes to outfield defense. It's possible that even if you bring him up to a gold shield, he's still awful on his jumps to the ball because that reaction stat is just so low. So I'm not comfortable rating him in S tier just because of that, but everything else on this card is great. Now on a Jorge Soler, another outfielder slash DH. I've talked a lot about this type of card already in this video, so he is just more of the same. If you like Jorge Soler cards, throw them at your DH. This is probably like a B or C tier outfielder and an A tier DH. Now Jeff McNeil, I'm excited about this one. This is probably my second biggest hot take of the video. This is an S tier card. There's a lot that's going right for this card right now. Second base, primary 
primary, which is a pretty shallow position. He's a left-handed hitter, which is great with all the right-handed pitching in the game right now. Great contact, great clutch, amazing fielding, and this card is really just missing speed and power. However, if we go and look at his quirks, he is loaded. And this screen is actually the reason I'm rating him an S-tier card. You can see he has both dead red and breaking ball hitter, which means that on basically every pitch that's thrown, he's going to have increased exit velocity on his swings. So even though he has pretty low power attribute wise, those quirks are going to be bumping that up a ton. And that's really the biggest flaw of this card. So all things considered, this card is great across the board and an S tier option at second base. On to Reese Hoskins now, who I'm going to rate B tier for first base, just because 72 contact right is pretty brutal. Honestly, if we're talking about how deep first base slash DH is right now, this card is maybe even pushing C tier. 72 contact versus right is just not what you want to see out of your first base baseman right now. And finally for the NL East, Joey Manises. I'm rating this card B tier for first baseman. This is a position where you really want a thumper at the plate and I don't know if his hitting stats are quite good enough to be a really top tier option at first base. Two more divisions to go. Marcus Stroman from the Cubs in the NL Central. This is a B tier starting pitcher for me. A slightly better version of Paul Blackburn in my opinion. But still leaves a lot to be desired. 93 hits per nine, 86 pitching clutch is a bit low. And the one thing I've never liked about Stroman cards is his lack of speed differential. He throws five pitches and in total there's only seven mile an hour difference between them. This is possibly another hot take with Hunter Green but I actually think this card's pretty terrible. Despite the fact that he has outlier he only throws three pitches and his off speed pitches are the exact same speed. This is basically a relief pitcher disguised as a starting pitcher and his per nines don't really make up for it so this is actually a C tier starting pitcher for me. On a Christian Yelich who is the best card in this division in my opinion I'm rating him as A tier. Despite the silver fielding, he has enough speed to make up for it as compared to some other cards we've already gone over. Everybody loves Yelich as well. 99-93 versus righties is pretty good. Overall, just a really solid outfield option. Cabrian Hayes, I'm rating in C tier, unfortunately. A lot of the things that he does well just aren't great for third baseman and what we want to see right now. It never really feels like you get enough value out of high fielding third baseman. I pretty much always prefer to go with the offensive options at that position. And finally, for the NL Central, we have Tommy Edmond, who I'm rating in B tier. He's really just B tier because of the defense. Amazing defense and 89 speed. Again, just lacking power versus righties though and doesn't have the quirks to make up for it. Just looking at the cards together pound for pound, I think if you're looking for a card like this, I'd just go with Jeremy Pena instead. Same defensively with more speed and more power versus right. On to the last division in the NL West, which is surprisingly one of the stronger divisions. Unfortunately, this card is not one of them though. I'm going to rate this card low B, high C tier. Kind of in the same boat as Cabrian Hayes in that what he does really well is is defense, but I don't care a whole lot about defense at first base. I know they made some changes with the scoop throws this year, which is nice, but this is still just a position where I want a huge bat. And the contact is just a little bit low for me, and the clutch is low as well, so it's always going to be a small PCI with this card. Next is Charlie Blackman and that gorgeous beard. I'm actually rating Blackman in B tier, though. There's no way I'm playing a guy with 65 fielding, 53 reaction in the outfield, so this is another DH for me. Also, he has 99 arm, which is hilarious. And despite the fact that Charlie Blackman cards play really well, and I've always always loved his swing. I just need more attributes than 98, 90 versus righties out of a DH type card. So that's why this one is getting rated a little bit lower in B tier. Next is Dustin May, who is easily the best pitcher out of all the team affinity cards. His stuff is really nasty. I am rating him in A tier and not S tier, however, for a couple reasons. One of them is the control. 85 walks per nine seems okay, but because this card throws so hard, his parts end up being really large. And then also 91 pitching clutch is going to bring your hits per nine down with runners in scoring positions, so that can make you pretty vulnerable there. Really solid pitch mix though, outlier on the sinker, really nasty stuff, an A tier starting pitcher for me. Next is Juan Soto, who is one of my favorite cards from this set. This is one of the best designated hitters in the game. What I really, really love about this card is the 115 clutch, so even if you do end up in a left on left situation, you're going to be pulling up this card's biggest weakness offensively, which is his contact versus left. So he actually turns into an amazing hitter versus lefties as well when there are runners in scoring position. Also has tons of quirks including dead red which is one of the most important ones. Playing this card in the outfield though is going to be pretty rough. I would rate this card as an A tier outfielder just because of his offense and like I said this is one of the best DHs in the game and one of my favorite cards in the set. So S tier DH for Juan Soto.
photo. And rounding out the whole video with Jock Peterson, who is another S tier card. The first base secondary really sells it for me with this card. It allows you to hide the defense and the speed and take advantage of the huge bat. Amazing hitting attributes and also has dead red as well. And what really takes this card over the top is the max out clutch attribute 125. This card is going to be pretty much maxed out versus righties if you have a runner in scoring position. And with contact being the weaker part of this card, in terms of hitting, the 125 clutch really brings it up a notch. So this is an S tier first baseman slash DH. That was a lot of talking. I hope it was helpful for you guys. Let's run through the divisions one more time and I'll go over who I think you should prioritize from each. In the AL East, the best card is Rafael Devers for sure. And then after that, I would go for Mullins. From the AL Central, it's a really tough call. None of the cards really excite me, to be honest. Eloy is the best one in terms of your DH, but I don't even think he's the best DH in the program. So uh, I guess I would go with Eloy first or maybe one of the shortstops, either Baez or Witt. I would stay far away from the pitchers in this division. From the AOS, the best card is Taylor Ward for sure. And then in a close second is Jeremy Pena. After him, I would go for Eugenio Suarez. From the NL East, the best card is Jeff McNeil. And then I would go for Ronald Acuna Jr. after that. From the NL Central, the only card that I really think is good is Christian Yelich. So grab him first and then whoever afterward. And then the NL West is loaded. So I would actually prioritize this division first. I would go with Juan Soto and Jock Peterson together first and then Dustin May afterwards. So that's going to do it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know down below in the comment section if it helps you out a lot and who you're really looking forward to using from this Team Affinity. I wish you all the best in trying to grind this out. It's going to take us a while to get these cards, but it's going to be worth it. Thanks for watching. Take care and we'll see you in the next one.